video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. It's KP's video news, y'all. That's right, it's KP's video news, y'all. Yep. I'm back with another episode of KP's video news. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. Ring that bell up there so you can get notifications. Don't forget to subscribe to KP's video news, y'all. Got to share it with your family. Share it with your peeps. Yep. Got to do what you got to do, y'all. Yes, indeed. What do I have here? This thing is, uh, I don't know what the heck that is. Anyway. I'm going to move on. Yep. KP Video News, y'all. Yeah. Shout out to Big Tony, man. Got a chance to talk to one of my old hometown, uh, old school buddies yesterday. Tony C. Good talking with you, brother. Looking forward to doing that interview. Anyway, uh, on with the show. It's KP Video News. Reverend Al Sharpton. I was a press conference with uh, Tyree Nichols' family invokes Martin Luther King's mountaintop speech a day before the funeral for Tyree Nichols, the father, skateboarder, and photographer who tattooed his mother's name on his arm. The Reverend Al Sharpton invoked Martin Luther King Jr., who delivered his famed mountaintop speech at the historic Mason Temple pulpit the night before he was assassinated. Sharpton has said, he is honored to be eulogizing the 29-year-old Nichols who died January 10th, three days after he was brutally beaten by Memphis police officers in an incident captured on video. Nichols' funeral on Wednesday at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church would draw thousands, including such high-profile attendees as Vice President Kamala Harris. We will continue in Tyree's name to head up to uh, Martin's Mountaintop, Sharpton said during a Tuesday evening press conference inspired by that final speech before King was shot and killed on a balcony at the Lorraine Motel. That's why we wanted to start this right on this sacred ground. This is a holy ground, Sharpton said, alongside Nichols' parents. And this family now is ours, and they're in the hands of history, and they're in the hands of those who would fight. On Martin Luther King Day, which fell almost a week after Nichols passed, his family gathered outside of that balcony now the National Civil Rights Museum, and continued a first weekend of calls for justice. Protest posters showed a photo of Nichols hospitalized, his face swollen and his nose in an S shape, on top of the photo written, I'm a man. The protest calling made famous by striking Memphis sanitation workers King had come to Memphis to support. Tyree was a man, the crowd said that day, as Sharpton, faith leaders, activists, and Nichols' family spoke Tuesday night. The same protest posters of Nichols in the hospital lined the church stage held by local Memphis activists and enveloped the evening speakers. I'm telling you, man, this is, uh, Sharpton was joined Tuesday night by Church of God in Christ Bishops Brandon Porter and Talbot Swan II, Nichols' parents, Rodney and Rovon Wells, and his siblings also attended. The need for justice has brought us here again, said Porter, whose father opened the church's doors for King more than 50 years ago, and the speakers continued to call for true police reform. We've got some sub, sub, uh, substantive change across the nation so that these types of incidents don't have a standing here time after time again, Swan said, singing from the same song sheet. Swan called for more than diversifying a police force, he said, because we understand that racism is systematic and it's structural, and regardless of the race of the police officer, if you don't change the structure, it still disenfranchises and brutalizes uh, black people. Five officers charged in Nichols' uh, death are black. Amber Sherman, a Memphis activist, spoke with the group's list of demands, which includes specific measures ending pretextual stops and requiring more public data on police activity, plus dissolving the police department's special units. Nichols was beaten by officers on a saturation patrol unit known as Scorpion, which has been deactivated and is under investigation in the wake of his death. Back to the activists. 
you guys are the truth. I appreciate you. Nichols older brother, Jamal Dupree said, you guys have actually changed my mind about Memphis because when I first got here, the first time, it was like a dark cloud over this city. And attendance also, Sharpton said, were family members of Eric Garner, who died after being uh, put in a chokehold by New York police in 2014. Stefan Clark, who was killed in Sacramento uh, by police in 2018. Nickel's stepfather, who he called father, had a message that was sweet and short. Sweet. Let me uh, adjust this right quick. That was sweet and short. Nick, uh, keep fighting for justice for our son and our family. Protect my wife because she is fragile right now. We need that for her. Trust me, I need it too. Rodney Wells said, this is going to be uh, short tonight because we've got a long fight ahead of us and we've got to stay strong for it. Blessings go out to the family of uh, Tyree Nichols, man. Going through, you know, they're going through something right now. It's like a lot of families are going through some things and we all need prayer. We all need prayer and we all need help and we all need assistance from each other when these situations arise. You know, it's a crazy, crazy things going on out here. You know, this situation here happened. At, this next story happened in Burbank. I'm not going to do the whole story, but it happened uh, while a white female Burbank cop stops a black man walking down the street. And, you know, you know, times, you know, have just gotten really, things have just gotten really bad. Really, really bad. You know, with all the stuff that's taking place in Memphis, Everybody has an opinion on that, you know, and rightfully so. However, situations like that happen every single day. The good news is that a large number of people who end up in these kind of situations get, get to walk away from them alive. However, that doesn't stop it from being wrong. Case in point, a man walking in Burbank, California, was confronted by cops over his tattoos. The United, and this is the United States who's supposed to be the land of the free while that is what was often said, in theory, it's rarely what's in practice. In practice, that this means a person can be harassed simply because they look different. At the same time, the limits to this rule come when a person is causing harm or some kind of disturbance. Bottom line is that the nation is supposed to protect the freedoms of all its residents. This is supposed to be, extend to even the people who have a lot of tattooing on their bodies. Recently, a man was confronted by two officers in Burbank, California, when he asked a female officer why he was stopped. The woman said it was because of his tattoo sleeve on his arm. She told him people who normally walk this area don't have tattoos like that. After that, the woman offered an apology when he complained about her reasoning. However, that did not stop her from continuing to question him, and she told him she, she would not be answering any more of his questions. Black man, he was stopped because of his tattoos. Come on, man. Stopped the man because of his tattoos. Wow. I'm telling you, this kind of crazy stuff is this is what's going on in the world today. Yep. So this is uh uh February, so this is Black History Month. I'm gonna give you a few things, a few little things about Harriet Tubman that I did not know, nine surprising facts about Harriet Tubman and the Reverend Car uh, Paul Carter who has led tours of the Harriet Tubman's longtime home in Auburn, New York, for more than 25 years, often startled by how little people know of the enslaved woman turned Underground Railroad guide and Civil War spy. He and the property's president and CEO, Karen Hill, are happy to educate people about Tubman's remarkable life. So here's a couple, a few things about Harriet Tubman that I did not know myself. First of all, she was not born Harriet Tubman, uh, not even close. Her birth, birth name was Armanita Ross, and her family uh, had a nickname for her. They called her Minty as a child. She changed her name to Harriet in honor of her mother when she was a teenager. Tubman preserved despite significant health issues. Uh, a weight thrown at, a, at another in, enslaved person hit Harriet Tubman on the head when she was young. She almost died, and the rest of her life she suffered from headaches, seizures, and visions. She undertook journeys of hundreds and thousands of miles despite deep physical limitations. 
uh, number three, she rescued her own family after making her own escape from enslavement. Tubman began her work as an underground railroad guide to, uh, going back to Maryland's eastern shore as many as 13 times for her family and friends. Ultimately, she led more than 70 people to safety and many to uh, Catherine's Ohio. Number four, Ta Harriet Tubman wasn't very tall. Though she had a reputation for being forceful, she was and she was said to threaten people who balked along the route to freedom with the gun. Tubman was uh, very, a very uh, petite woman standing under five feet tall. Number five, she outlived her husbands. Uh, she outlived her husbands. So how many husbands did she have? Well, she outlived her husband. Just leave it at that. Okay. Number six, Harriet Tubman was the first woman to lead a U.S. military raid. Tubman was given $200 for three years as a cook, nurse, scout, and spy for the Union Army during the Civil War. Her service included leading a, leading a raid that freed 750 enslaved people in South Carolina. That's right. Making her the first woman to lead an armed raid in the enemy territory in the United States. That's right. Some good old history here. Tubman, uh, number seven, Tubman got help from powerful friends like William uh, Seward. She developed a friendship with one of the most powerful men of the time, William Seward, who later served as Lincoln's Secretary of State. And it was at his house in Auburn that she purchased as her family residence for a reasonable price in 1859. Number eight, Tubman never stopped serving others. When the war was over, her generosity didn't stop. Tubman pushed tirelessly for women's suffrage, and though she was always struggled financially, she was a woman of deep faith who shared what little she had, donating a piece of her property as a home for elderly black Americans. She wound up living there during her own later years as well. And number nine, Tubman lived an extremely long life for her, for her time. She passed away in 1913. She was around 91 years old. And she was believed to have born, been born in 1822, which means she lived an astonishingly long life for that uh, time period, especially considering the physical strains she had endured. That's Sister Harriet Tubman and some, you know, nine facts that I have just, that have just been revealed to me that I did not know. Yep. Okay, folks. Let me see here. Moving on to uh, this next story. All right, folks. Here we go. Uh, see, like the state, the state of uh, Illinois has is planning on dropping the charges against rapper R. Kelly, and he would not have any more years added to his prison sentence in the state of Illinois. So as you know, he's already been, he has been convicted on his federal charges and I think they gave him 30 years in federal, federal uh, prison for his crossing state lines and uh, uh, so-called uh, human trafficking, human trafficking and, and uh, uh, abuse of underage women. Uh, but the state of Illinois had, in order to drop charges against him. So they won't be adding any more charges to uh, R. Kelly's sentence. This is new news here. And when I get more, I'll come back and I'll revisit that. Yep. Now this this right here, man, is disturbing to me. And I, I you know, from this point on, I'm going to be looking at this guy a little bit side-eyed. You got uh, NBA athlete Steve, Steph, uh, Steph Curry pushes pushes to block low income housing development from being constructed by his by his home he has pushed to, to block the construction uh in the vicinity of his 30 million dollar california mansion mm -hmm. yep according to the letter that he that, that curry wrote to the uh to the city to the city council about the planned project Steph Curry and his wife Aisha penned a letter to the town, Atherton. According to the letter, 
both Curry and his 33-year-old wife are concerned about the threat such a development could pose and the safety and privacy of the couple and their and their three children. So you not <sighs> Atherton residents, we have the following that we have been following along with the housing element updates in the special interest of the 23 Oakwood property they wrote on January 18th. And we hesitate to add that uh, to add to the not in our backyard rhetoric, but we wanted to send a note before today's meeting. Safety and privacy to us and our kids continue to be a top priority and one of the biggest reasons we chose Afton as a home. We kindly ask the town adopts the new housing element without the inclusion of 23 Oakwood. Should that, should that not be sufficient for the state we ask that the town commits to investigating and considerably taller fencing and landscaping to block sites into their own family's property. Wow, this guy here, man. I don't even want to read any more of the story. Seth Curry uh, has turned, he has turned, you know. Oh, they, they want to try to build some housing over here close to my house, low-income housing over here close to my house. But the people that, are, that was talking about building the property said, it's a village. It's a little village. It's not an apartment building. And, uh, and it's not, you know, when you think about low-income housing as far as uh, being in, in California and in the, uh, especially in the Bay Area, <laughs> low-income could, could po- probably be $200,000. 200, $200, you see what I'm saying? $200,000 a year that that person would probably make. That would be low income in that area when everybody else in that area, in that neighborhood is millionaire. So it's pathetic. Steph Curry, you are pathetic. I have nothing to do with you, man. I'm done with you. I am done with you. Anyway, this story here, this last story, it's uh, 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 Bobby Wilson learned about the spotted lantern fly. This nine-year-old hoped to curb the damage the invasive species caused to trees by spraying her New Jersey neighborhood with a homemade solution of water, dish soap, and apple cider vinegar. But not long after Bobby, nine-year-old child who was black, started spraying last October, she was approached by a police officer who began questioning her. The officer was responding to a report from her next-door neighbor who called a non-emergency report a little black woman walking spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees said the nine-year-old was uh, wearing a hood scares me it's a grown man now while the police soon realized there was nothing suspicious about bobby the girl's mother and critics slammed the incident as the latest example of racial profiling months after police questioned bobby yale university honored the young scientist known as bobby wonder for her efforts to eradicate spotted lantern flies in her hometown Caldwell, uh, New Jersey, the Yale School of Public Health recognized Bobby this month and thanked her for donating her personally lantern fly connection collection to the uh, University Peabody's Museum. Yale doesn't normally do anything like this, but this is something unique to Bobby, an assistant uh, professor at with the Yale Public Health who organized the uh, January 20 uh, event said in a news release. We wanted to show her about, talk about her bravery and how inspiring she is. And we just want to make sure she continues to feel honored and loved by the Yale community. And uh, so her mother, Monique, stated that her daughter was grateful for the event, honoring her interest in science. And Joseph acknowledged that she wasn't sure whether she would, uh, she would make a big issue of the incident, but that's what she wanted to sh- to shine light on the situation when she uh, realized that the neighbor's call was intentional. Come on, man. You're going to call the cops on a nine-year-old child. Come on now. And anyway, the, uh, the, city, the city had already issued. This is what the city had issued. In the city, in New Jersey, the whole state, the state has urged residents to do their part in eradicating the insect. And if you see a spotted lantern fly, help us stomp it out, reads a message from the the state's Department of Agriculture has sent out that. So why, you know, with this this clown 
called the cops on a nine-year-old child that was doing the right thing. You know, it's always the same old people, man. It's the same old clowns over and over and over and over and over again. Well, you know what? It's KP's Video News. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And hit that notification bell up in the corner when you want to get notified of any new KP video news stories and articles. Thank you for all your support. KP's video news, y'all. KP's video news, y'all.